Namaste. My name is Ram Hotep. I'm broadcasting on behalf of 13signsastrology.com. Uh, feel good to be back. Uh, it's been a while since we've done a segment. And on this particular uh, episode of segment, I want to talk about the shift of 2013. Um, haven't really talked anything about this. Um, it's my first time really going into this subject or whatever pertaining to the shift of 2013. Um, now, a lot of people, they was identifying with the shift more so from perspective of, you know, the uh, conspiracy theorists and different people out there was all talking about 2012. And everybody was talking about how 2012 was going to be basically the year that everything was going to go down for the shift and all of that. But I'm doing this video to kind of talk about 2013 and the importance of this shift that's going to be taking place, that's already taking place in 2013. And I'm um, started actually in uh, February of 2013 or whatever. And this particular shift is going to be... Um, different parts to it and um this year is going to be three different shifts that are going to three different main points of a shift that's going to take place or whatever so it's different parts to the shift and most people heard me talk about that um <clears throat> now the shift that this particular shift we're in is actually it started in 2012 and it's going to go up it lasts all the way up until some people heard me say all the way up until like 2018 so we're going through a series of different shifts what I'm going to do here is kind of more so go deeper into it and kind of explain to you how to really understand what which two planets are governing these shifts. Um, now, when you talk about shifts, shifts of consciousness and stuff like that, you usually are dealing with bodies that are usually communicating with each other, with each other in the celestial realm. And some of these bodies could be communicating with each other favorably some of these bodies can be communicating with each other unfavorably or kind of like arguing with each other and many of you heard me talk about this these are called aspects but when you talk about major shifts of consciousness major shifts of consciousness are ruled by like bodies that are like outer bodies planets that don't affect the individual some planets affect the, affect the individual like there are seven planets that affect the individual and these planets correlate with the seven days of the week so you have like seven personal planets or whatever really five but is really you could say seven so you have um the sun the moon mercury venus mars uh jupiter and saturn these are called the personal planets but then you have what's called like the the uh, outer planets and the outer planets are like those particular planets that affect generations because of how far they are from the um from the earth and from the sun so outer planets an example of an outer planet or the outer planets will be like neptune Pluto and uh, Uranus so these are your outer planets now in astrology we watch the outer planets and we watch the the relationships that the outer planets have with each other and the reason why we do this is because this helps us to measure time and cycles now many of you heard me talk about cycles um, a cycle is kind of like a, a point in time you know what I'm saying and then you have what's called actual time which is like an actual pinpoint aspect of a cycle but a cycle could be there there's different cycles there's thousand year cycles there's 20,000 year cycles there's 30 year cycles there's 60 year cycles within these cycles different shifts take place so when I when you hear me talk about the shift and all of this different stuff about the shift what I'm talking about is a series of different cycles that are beginning and ending all within a period and point of time so within like really like an eight year or eight to ten year period of time where it's going to be a lot of major cycles that are beginning and ending some of these cycles are twenty thousand year cycles some of these cycles are two hundred year cycles some of these cycles are just thirty and forty and fifty year cycles but there's different cycles or whatever so in each of these cycles the ancients would measure them so that they could help humanity understand time and what must be done because time is based on the planets so um this particular, uh, I guess, planet, the, the, this particular shift that I'm dealing with, we're going into Pluto and Uranus. Now, um, Pluto and Uranus are basically the key, I guess these are the bad guys that are really causing a lot of drama in the shift, like during this point in time. It's Pluto and Uranus. It's been happening since 2012. In 2012, around, um, I think it was in June, Pluto and Uranus basically went to war with each other. They began a war, a war in the, in the skies. Now, when you read about like battles in the sky, you read in the Bible when it talked about there was a war in the heavens and all of that. What they don't tell you is, is that this is going into astrology. These were astrologers that wrote this. So 
when planets go to war with each other, that means they're not in good communication with each other. They're not cahoots. They're not. They don't have a treaty. So basically, they're at war with each other, or whatever. So Pluto, Uranus, this is a very key uh, war that's taking place to help us to enter into this new shift and this new cycle of time. Because right now we're at the end of a point in time and we're at the beginning of a point in time. So the end is the beginning and the beginning is the end. So right now we're at basically what's called no time as I always like to talk about in different videos. And what's going on right now is that we're in a particular point where it's a war that's going on, a war, a spiritual war that's going on. And it's a spiritual war based upon uh, viewpoints and how people see things and how this new energy should be applied to humanity and to the world. And it's a disagreement with that right now. And um, when you talk about planets not agreeing, it's, it's different levels to it. Um, you have some ETs that aren't agreeing, that are at war with each other. You have wars that are going on amongst the elite families, um, the elites like the Illuminati and people you talk about the Illuminati there it's a war going on and within that and then you have a war going on in humanity within humanity itself you have wars going on within races and all of this really basically is goes boils down to these two planets not in communication it's causing a spiritual strife spiritual upheaval um, spiritual turmoil to happen in a lot of people now Pluto what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break down to you the nature of each planet to help you to understand Pluto and then Uranus now, Pluto, uh, many of you heard me talk about Pluto, is uh, the planet of research. Pluto is very calculating, but Pluto is very gangster type. It's, it's a gangster type of calculating. So it's, Pluto is very smart, but Pluto is very tricky. Pluto um, rules geniuses, but Pluto is like not responsible with the, the information that it gets. It'll do something very destructive with the type of information that it gets. So it'll gain a lot of information, very, very knowledgeable but then take all this information and try to destroy some shit with it. So that's the nature of Pluto. So Pluto is very tricky. Um, humanity does not really have a good grasp over how to work with the energy of Pluto. So a lot of times Pluto gets humans in trouble. Um, when you look into the occult, Pluto is actually a occult entity. And I have a video talking about that, so I'm not going to go into that here, but the energy of Pluto is controlled by an occult entity. So... When you, when you look at the nature of these different planets, you have to realize they got their names. Like when you talk about Pluto, Pluto has different names. Some people call it Gaga, some people call it Platoon, some people call it Pluto. But they got their names because of the nature of the different of, of the of the, the planet itself based upon the deity that it was named after. So the deity governs the planet. So when you talk about Pluto, Pluto is governed by a particular being. So a planet is a very much alive and has a soul just like you. Like you're alive and you have a soul, a planet is alive and has a soul, and it's a being too, and it sends out energy and controls things too. So just breaking that down. So this is what you would call like a greater body. So when you talk about the Elohim, a lot of people when they talk about the Elohim, um, some people say that the planets were really truly the Elohim. And I'm going to be doing a um, video where I'm going to talk about a lot of this stuff in the Bible and kind of like help people to understand that a lot of the stories in the Bible are really talking about astrology. They just put characters on planets, put, created stories off of different celestial movements, and created a big old play off of two planets. And that's what I'm showing you here. So um, so you have Pluto, then you have Uranus. Now, Uranus is a very sudden planet. It's a very radical planet. Um, Uranus got its nature because of the way that it wobbles, the way that it revolves on its axis. Your Uranus sits on its side, like it sits sideways or whatever. So it's not. it's a lopsided planet. It doesn't look like... It doesn't revolve on its axis the way other planets do. It has a very abnormal and awkward orbit. So Uranus is basically the, the planet of radical and sudden change because of that. Because it's hard to predict how Uranus is going to move in and out the ecliptic, when it's going to do X, Y, and Z. Scientists had to really watch Uranus for a long time before they could really give us a lot of information and data on it. So that's what makes it very sudden. And Uranus rules like the radio communication but it rules like higher communication it rules like uh telepathy clear audience things of that nature um ways of communicating with people that go past the spoken word these are all things that uranus rules so this is a what you would call an et planet as well because of the nature of it uranus is some planets are more so have a nature more so closer to humans and the way we are humans and when i say humans that means the way human civilization is and operates some planets kind of complement that do you have other planets that are like ET type 
planets or whatever. So Uranus is kind of like an ET planet, meaning it's not, it doesn't function in a way that humans understand. And Pluto is that way too. So Pluto and Uranus are not communicating good with each other. So that's telling us right now that two ETs or different ET groups are not getting along with each other. There are certain ET groups that are ruled by Uranus. There are certain ET groups that are ruled by Pluto. Um, the ET groups that are ruled by Uranus, they don't really believe in uh, destroying things. They don't really believe in destroying things from a sense, uh, and I guess in a, from a perspective of using explosives and using materials and things like that to destroy things, whereas the beings from Pluto believe in destroying things. They're very destructive, you know what I'm saying? Very more so self-centered. The beings from Uranus are more like scientists, so they have a very detached way of looking at things to where the only time they would destroy something is if it didn't fit into the scientific experiment. So they're very logical and calculating. And then you have beings from Pluto that are very, they're smart, like I said, but they have basically a boiling point to where they'll explode and they'll basically go crazy. You know what I'm saying? And go insane and just start getting self-centered and doing whatever they have to do to make it and make for their species to make it. So this is two types of entities that aren't getting along or whatever. And this can go down into these types of classes of people can go auto or classes of entities and beings can, can manifest in human nature as well. Because you have a, a nature of a human that's similar to Uranus, which is more like an Aquarius. And then you have a nature of a human that's similar, more so similar to Pluto, which is more like a Scorpio. So that's what you're really dealing with. You're dealing with like a Scorpio, Scorpionic type energy versus an Aquarian type of energy. And these two energies aren't communicating. So what happens is that um, Uranus is very radical. Pluto is very much like about power and control and like you're going to respect me. You, you ain't going to push over me. Like I said, Pluto is a gangster, but Uranus is radical. So it's going to be radical changes going on amongst the people. And they're going to go against a lot of the people are going to try to attempt to, you know, go against the power structure, the, the construct, the powers that be type of thing. So that's really the miscommunication is it's a miscommunication right now going on with the power and the people. And the way these planets um, play out, you have to look at the signs that they're in. And this is where it gets interesting. Um, now, in Western astrology, they're teaching that Pluto is in Capricorn. Pluto is not in Capricorn. Pluto is in Sagittarius. And they're teaching that Uranus, I believe they're saying in Western astrology that Uranus is in uh, Aquarius. Uranus is not in Aquarius, it's in Pisces. It's in Pisces right now. So, well, actually, they're saying that Uranus is in Aries, excuse me, in Western astrology. They're saying Uranus is in Aries when in actuality it's in Pisces. So, Pisces is a spiritual uh, sign, and Sagittarius is a spiritual sign. Remember, I said Pluto is in Sagittarius. So, these are two mutable signs, signs of magicians. And these two natures aren't getting along. So you got the mutable nature of Pisces that's detached and doesn't care nothing about power and it's all about freedom and making sure people are free. But then at the same token, if you push a Pisces too hard, they will get very radical and and do something very calculating to, you know, go against you or whatever. So you have a Pisces type of energy that's more so passive like a cat. But if you push it, it'll lash out on you versus this Sagittarian energy. Which is more Sagittarius is especially with Pluto and Sagittarius is about power and religious control. It's about power and religious control. So what's happening is is that a lot of the people are going against the religious constructs, and a lot of the religious constructs are melting down now. Um, and, and people are seeing it on. I mean, you're you're seeing the stuff that's going on with the Catholic Church, and you're seeing a lot of dictators suddenly dying, and a lot of religious leaders like they had all this power are all of a sudden passing passing away. And people are wondering, why is all this happening? And they're blaming certain people for it. But I'm trying to explain to people, it's those planets. Those planets are playing out. And this particular miscommunication between these two planets only happens every, this particular cycle only happens every 80-something years. This happened in, back in 1930. So if you really look at what was going on in 1930 and look at how many different religious groups came over here during that time, you'll see we're in the same time. If you look at the economy, the way the economy was during that time, how the people didn't agree with the new powers that controlled the economy. That's the same thing that's going on now, except this time it's not really, it's, it's about the economy, but it's about the religious constructs, the power constructs, the political constructs, and the people going against that. You know what I'm saying? So that's really what's going on. Um, with Uranus being in Pisces like that, like I said, it's very, very spiritual, and we are still in the age of Pisces, but Uranus is the planet of Aquarius. So it's making the people really get to a point where they're like really ready to make the shift into the age of Aquarius, but then they're still kind of like, you know, Pisces don't really like to change. They kind of hold back and they're like, mm, well, I don't know if that's going to go right. Or so the people are kind of like in the middle and they don't really know what to do. 
So a lot of people are very confused. And then you have Pluto, which represents the powers that be. And they're like trying to keep power and control and keep the world going so that everything just doesn't melt down. So that's what's going on right now, because you got to remember the people that are in power are still people, too. Like the power construct is an entity itself, but it's ran by people, real life people. You know what I'm saying? So even those people are confused. The people that are on the side of Pluto, which is the people that are in power, the elites that are on the side of Pluto, they're even like confused trying to figure out, OK, what are the people going to settle on? Because the people are very unstable right now because Uranus is very unstable. So they're like, what are the, like, what are the people going to do? Like, are people going to decide to... Uh, shift and change the planet and, and embrace the new energy or are the people just going to be like yo we don't really want change we want to kind of like keep everything the way it was and you know what i'm saying to keep things the way it's going or whatever if things can't stay the same like we have to change we all have to change or whatever because that's what the shift is all about the shift is all about change it's a shift in, in consciousness so um that's mainly what's what's going on right now or whatever as far as the shift or whatever so that's the main point so you have different dates that this is going to get hot on now lately i know a lot of people may have been noticed in february like the end of february all the way up until about uh march the 16th is the beginning point of this first shift there's different dates so the beginning point of this first shift is in the middle of february started in the middle of february goes all the way up to the middle of march that's been a really um key time or whatever it's been a very very dramatic time a lot of stuff has been happening with people i know a lot of people have been feeling the shift and I'm just making this video just to kind of like let people know like you're not crazy. It's something going on with the planets. And that's why everybody's going through so much. Because people have been going through so much. I mean, I've been getting the emails from suicide emails to emails with people confused about religion to just people worrying about asking me about, well, what about this religious leader? I heard that they were doing this to this particular child and they were molesting people. And all of this stuff is coming out. Like All this information is coming out about religious leaders and people just in power and it's like just really a, a big change or whatever and that started like i said february and may i mean february and march and then it's another uh point where it's going to get hot and this is going to start up in like um around may it's going to be like around around may the 15th uh it's going to get it's going to get really hot from like may to june or whatever and it's going to be another point where things are going to shift again it's going to be like a a, a frictional point because you got to remember what i'm explaining here is like when planets uh, have miscommunications with each other it's different phases of it like it's this different levels to it you know what I'm saying so like if a planet is in square because that's that's pretty much what's going on uh, Uranus is in square to Pluto so Uranus is in a 90 degree angle with Pluto which is a miscommunication this is a 90 degree angle so this is a miscommunication or whatever so they're not communicating good or whatever so you have to remember that these these particular shifts they have different frictional points. So the first frictional point was the dates I gave you. Then the second frictional point, like I said, is from mid-May to mid-June. And then there's another frictional point, which is going to be like the finale for the shifts in this year. And that's going to start in um in October, October through November. There's going to be another frictional point where things are going to get kind of hot. So these are your shifts or whatever. These are your shifts this year. Um, it's going to be very political. Now, the one in the summer is going to be more past life type of energy or whatever this one kind of was like the kickoff to 2013 the year of the snake the year of politics the year of just all of these changes or whatever but the next one and the one in the summer is going to be a past life a lot of past life energy and the reason why i say that is because uranus and pluto both of these planets are going to go retrograde which means they're going to go backwards when a planet goes retrograde that causes a humanity and the memory of humanity to kind of go back into a time a different time because these planets control, we're, we're, we're linked to these planets through our memory. So these planets kind of control our thoughts and our consciousness and how things manifest in our lives or whatever. So when these two planets, Pluto and Uranus, are going to go retrograde at the same time, and that's not a coincidence, at the same time, they're, they're going to go retrograde. And that's going to be in the summer, and that's going to bring a lot of past life karma. Um, when it comes to religion, when it comes to people that may have been born on this planet before when there was a lot of religious turmoil um, during the, the inquisitions or during the time when the church killed a lot of the witches and different things like that. All of these different wars that took place within religion were probably governed by this Pluto square Uranus shift that takes place all the time or whatever. So but this one is going to be really deep when it comes to religion. So that's going to be the mid summer one. Then there's another one that's going to end this year. It's going to be in November. That's going to be the one that's going to end 2013 or whatever. So just kind of dropping this video to uh, kind of
kind of give everybody a heads up. Everybody needs to look out. Um, the best thing you can do, because everybody wants to know like remedies or what they can do to really counteract this shift. This is going to be a very tricky shift because it didn't really just start overnight. These are planets that have been getting ready for this. So this really kind of started back in like 2008, 2009. So right now what's happening is, is that basically it's coming out. It's pretty much coming out as far as um, the frictional point is coming out now. We're at the point of friction, the, the point of conflict. And the point of conflict is going to last for four years. So it's really the only thing we can do is really look at the areas of our natal charts to see where these two planets are at. Like you have to find Sagittarius and um, you'll see, have to see where, where Sagittarius is at in your natal chart. And I can actually, what I'm going to do here is give you the degree of this particular um shift so that people can kind of mark it i'm going to look for it now before i shut this video down to see exactly where uranus is now uranus is in 15 degrees pisces right now so if you want to look for where uranus is in your natal chart it's 15 degrees pisces so look for 15 degrees pisces in your 13 signs natal chart and then pluto is in um 14 degrees sagittarius so 15 degrees pisces uranus 14 degrees Sagittarius for uh, Pluto. So if you want to know like how this is going to play out or how to like deal with this energy, you have to look for it in your natal chart. Some people is going to fall in the first house, which is this house of the self. Some people is going to fall in the seventh house, which is the house of marriage and law and things of that nature. So how exactly this is going to play out for you will depend on the house that is in. That's very important. Like for you, the person, you need to look at the house that is in. And for people that are really going through a lot of stuff, with this shift and you, you know what I'm saying, you, you feel like you might need to get a consultation or something like that, I'm definitely doing consultations um, to kind of help you to pinpoint where these planets are and how it's going to affect you or whatever. But um, it's pretty easy to pinpoint. Just find the house that, I mean, just, just find a degree and then find out which house that degree is in and that's how it's going to play out for you. So um, if it's going to be in the third house, that's going to be dealing with the community. That's going to be dealing with people that are into community organizations and stuff like that. Um, if it's in the second house, that's going to be dealing with financial. Um, if it's in the third house, again, that's going to be dealing with siblings, um, cousins, brothers and sisters, neighbors. You know what I'm saying? So that's where a lot of the frictional energy will play out. For some people, it's going to be in the 10th house. You know what I'm saying? The 10th house, that's going to be dealing with the life purpose. It's going to be a lot of friction when it comes to you finding yourself, your life purpose. And this shift, I'm going to shut this video down. I want to kind of like end with this. And I'm not trying to scare anybody, but this is going to be a very... So, like, don't really downplay the stuff that I'm saying here because Uranus squared Pluto is very destructive. It can be very, it can turn into serious warfare. Serious warfare. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about civil war. It, it could go to so many different levels with these planets if it's not managed correctly. If the people that are in power don't manage their power correctly. If the uh, people in the community don't manage their the, the, they, they want to be radical and rebellious and have all these radical and agitating speeches people want to speak out and talk about you know what i'm saying like gun control and the government taking stuff from it and all that and that's cool but you got to remember that sometimes you speak out you want to be radical and you know what i'm saying want to speak your mind and understand that you know what i'm saying but that could really get you in trouble when you're dealing with people that are, have serious power and that's what you got to remember pluto represents gangsters people that are have serious power you got to remember these people that run the world the elites these people are gangsters. That's why they've been running this world for so long. These people are not chumps. You know what I'm saying? So you look at people like that are on the internet and they talk all of this, well, we're gonna get our guns if the government comes against us, we're gonna get our guns, we're gonna stand against them. You gotta realize the people in government, it might look all like, you know, like peaches and cream on TV. You're like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you see the president smiling and different people in government smiling, different politicians and everybody's thinking it's all peaches and cream. But you gotta remember these people embrace a very gangster doctrine <laughs> uh, to keep their power. If you study Third Reich, you know what I'm saying, you study Adolf Hitler, and then you study George Bush, he used a lot of those principles from Third Reich to run this country. You study the doctrine that most political figures have to go through before they're groomed to get into a seat like that. You talk about a powerful seat. It's ruled by Pluto. See, that's what I'm breaking down here. The, the presidency and these seats are ruled by a very dark, occult planet. Remember, Pluto is the planet of the occult. So you were talking about presidents have to study all of this dark type of knowledge, too, in order to be a president, just as much as they have to study the light in order to be a good president or whoever, even a politician, like any person that's in power or whatever, a congressman or whatever, they have to they, they have to study both sides or whatever. So what I'm saying is, is that the people 
need to think about things before they just go out and decide that they're going to start some type of a war to try to go against the government or whatever. And you know what I'm saying? Like that's just going to lead to more destruction, more chaos, because Pluto is the planet of, it's the planet of plutonium. It's the planet of explosions. And we know that um, there's been many times when plutonium has been used on this planet and it can happen again. When people in power uh, think that their power has been threatened, you know what they do next? They usually start killing people. They usually start murdering people, often people. So um, just saying all that to say be wise, be calculating in how you rebel against these powers, like people that feel like they have problems with the powers that be, be calculating how you rebel. Um, now Pluto on your natal chart is going to kind of tell you where the power lies at for you or which power is, is in control because you might be the person in power. You might not be on the side of Uranus. So it depends on how it's playing out in your natal chart. Some people are more so side with Uranus. Remember, I started out talking about that. Some people are going more so side with Pluto. So you have to figure out which point you're on and then figure out a way to reason with that other planet so that it won't create too much friction in your life. If you're the person in power, you need to learn how to be a little bit more uh, open when it comes to looking at the outlook of the people and looking at the, the perspective of the people and how they see it. People in power have to see, okay, the people... They have to put yourself in the shoes of the little man, pretty much is what I'm saying. So the people in power have to do that, and then the people have to, in turn, put their self in, try to put themselves into the shoes of those people that are up under this power of Pluto. Because being up under this power of Pluto is similar to somebody pulling a gun in your head telling you you're going to do X, Y, and Z, or else. That's exactly how Pluto operates. And that's the type of power that a lot of the politicians, who are normal people, just like everybody else, but it's deceit. The seat creates so much darkness, so much power and control associated with the seat. So these two people or these two different individuals, whether you're ruled by Pluto or Uranus, has to figure out how to uh, make amends based on their natal chart and based on where these planets are transiting their natal chart so that they can limit the friction because it can get really serious. A lot of people are going to lose everything in this, lose their lives, lose their financial life, lose their spiritual life, lose everything, all of the above, you know what I'm saying, in this. So very deep time but a um, very exciting time so um, once you learn how these planets are playing out you'll kind of learn how to ride the wave or the roller coaster because astrology is kind of like playing a game with karma it's kind of like how my um, fellow Buddhists like to talk about it's like playing a game with karma and it's like once you learn how these planets are playing out you learn how to play with karma how to um, reason with karma I should say you know what I'm saying but you can't reason with karma if you don't know her game and that's where studying your natal chart comes into play at. So I hope you guys got something from this video. I really didn't plan for it to go this long, but hey, um, the universe led me to start speaking like this. So hey, it is what it is. <laughs> um, I thank you guys for listening and watching. And until we meet again, I'm going to leave you in peace, love, and light. Namaste.